Hey everyone, Cynthia Ray here again. Anyhow, just wanting to share with you a little information about the anti-inflammatory diet and what inflammation means and how we can use our diet to suppress inf the inflammatory process internally and chronically. Um, anyhow, as you know, um, inflammation we know on the outside of our body is usually a localized, um, in a localized area. So we see redness or swelling where our, our body was injured in some kind of way. And it's so amazing because our bodies will heal itself on the outside and the inside. But on the outside, you can see um, how your body heals itself when you have an injury or any kind of inflammation externally over time. So that also actually happens internally inside our body as well with our cells and systemically. So you'll find that um, one of the biggest causes of internal inflammation is stress, um, whether it's physical stress, emotional stress, um, you know, different things that happen to our, in our daily lives that cause us stress and, and how we respond to life really. So it's really not about the situation that's happening in our life. It's actually about how we respond to it, which can cause stress. So over time with chronic stress, we have, um, hormones and chemicals that circulate in our body that are released, um, as a response to fight or flight. But the thing is, is that our body starts to attack itself because there's a too, too much stress happening. So which leads to chronic internal systemic inflammation. So those types of inflammations happen very subtly and it, it's happening internally, even though we don't have symptoms or feel anything. Over time, our body starts to, like I said, attack itself and it takes years and years and finally, we get to a point in our lives where we start showing symptoms. If we're having um, any kind of aches or pains or fatigue or um, imbalances in our blood sugar, just not feeling well overall. And that's kind of the beginnings of it. And then over time, if we keep stressing our bodies out, and even ex excessive exercise can do the same thing. That's a, a stress on your body as well, just not listening to your body. Um, even chronic dieting can be a stress on your body because you're not listening to your body and nourishing it and nurturing it the way we should be. So over time, you're gonna start experiencing some subtle symptoms and maybe ignore it and just keep pushing through or drinking more caffeine to push through. And our poor bodies are calling out for us to help it, but we're doing nothing about it. So it's a really great idea to kind of think of yourself as a parent to yourself and you're the child. How would you treat your child? How would you nourish it and nurture it to give it the best um, optimal well-being that it could have? Uh, anyhow, so when that happens and we're ignoring it over time, we increase the stress in our bodies, of course, and our body continues to break itself down and cause more inflammation. So the best thing you can do, obviously, is to take care of yourself and stop and learn how to manage stress better and take a different outlook on life and learn how to respond to certain situations um, in a more healthy way. Also, um, exercise, gentle yoga, meditation, relaxation and breathing are all awesome ways to learn to combat stress. And from a spiritual aspect, you know, if you're you know, spirituality, I'm a Christian, so I tend to go to prayer, uh, meditation time with God to get a new perspective on life and see, know that he's in control and I'm not. So giving up that sense of being in control is huge. Anyway, so um, over time, so we, if we don't take care of it, then we end up with chronic disease. So some, uh, a lot of people get lupus. And um, these are all uh, diseases, diseases of inflammation. So lupus, heart disease, diabetes, hyper or hypoglycemia, um, what else? Uh, uh, fibromyalgia, a lot of um, arthritis, a lot of diseases of inflammation um, start to occur. Um, Alzheimer's later on in life is also another disease of inflammation. So all of these things can occur, possibly even stroke. So um, it's found in research now, you know, that 98% of disease, it's almost fact now, is uh, the contributor is chronic stress. So and even heart disease, that's finally come out now that um, the contributor to that is chronic stress and those crazy stress hormones that circulate through our bodies um, that are causing these crazy diseases. So um, I've met with clients over the years and my number one question is, what's your stress level like? Because majority of the people come to me when they've tried everything and now they need somebody else to educate them and teach them about what's happening. Um, you know, the internet can only get you so far. So <laughs> it ends up to be me, which is fantastic. I love it, um, helping people to understand the whole picture. So as far as diet goes, the other thing that you can do is um, 
to take out processed food. That's number one. That's pro that's probably the thing. Sugar, processed food, are the things that are actually going to increase inflammation in your body. And then after that, then you can follow a diet that is an anti-inflammatory diet. So it's going to bring inflammation down, as well as other lifestyle things you can do, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so things like um, lots of fruits and veg fruits, vegetables, mostly vegetables. Um, Another thing I love, I really love, is turmeric, or curcumin is actually um, derived from turmeric, which actually has anti-inflammatory properties. Also, vitamin C. Vitamin C I can't talk enough about. It's absolutely amazing. It heals everything from canker sores to cancer. <laughs> so generations ago, um, uh, Dr. Linus Pauling actually healed uh, polio in children and adults um, with vitamin C. So vitamin C is a healer in itself. Just if you just have a cold or anything like that, um, therapeutic or medicinal doses of vitamin C can reverse it pretty quick. Anyhow, so um, also on this anti-inflammatory diet, um, yogurt is one of the things on there. Um, even glass of wine and dark chocolate is on there. Um, fish, fish oil, those are uh, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids are great for anti-inflammatory um, foods. And let's see what other fresh foods. Um, Non-processed soy is on there. And of course, plenty of water and exercise are things that you need for anti-inflammatory. I think there's a few couple more things on there, but I, I don't know if I'm missing anything. Um, and of course, reducing the amount of wheat that you eat in your diet is great. So the more whole food, the better. The more um, unprocessed food, the better. Food closest to nature, you know, basically a fresh orange picked off a tree as opposed to orange juice is closer to nature. Um, so, you know, if you can find foods that are more whole food, it's actually what we've been eating too in this um, cleanse that we've been doing. Uh, it's something that, foods that you can just keep implementing in your diet. So things like that, um, you know, sugar once in a while, no big deal, you know, just as long as the majority of your diet is anti-inflammatory and um, the sugar should be a drop in the bucket. But, um, and then also to listening to your body. That's huge, that's probably the biggest thing, if anything I could tell you. Really pay attention to your body. Listen to what it's telling you soon. Like anything, early detection is better. If you're listening to your body and what it's telling you, you're taking care of it, that's going to be the best way to prevent disease. So take care of your bodies, nourish them, nurture them, and listen to what it's saying. Anyway, if you have any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.